This is the Framework Desktop. This is actually our first non-laptop product. And you might be thinking, aren't desktop PCs already pretty upgradable and repairable and modular? And yes, actually they are. In fact, the desktop PC ethos was one of the core inspirations for the Framework laptop to begin with, really bringing in this whole idea that you could take an ecosystem-based approach to consumer electronics by designing products that are modular and upgradable and repairable. And so then you might be wondering, why did we build this thing? And the answer actually starts with a chip, amazingly enough. So this product didn't exist on a roadmap a year ago, but AMD started telling us about this processor that's now called the AMD Ryzen AI Max series, this massive processor right here. And when we heard about it, we knew we had to build a product with it. This processor sits way above the rest of AMD's mobile processor stack. It has massive memory bandwidth, a 256-bit memory bus. It has a huge GPU core count with new RDNA 3.5 Radeon graphics, and it has a huge CPU core count, 16 CPU cores. This is just an insane processor. It was really clear right from the outset that the best way we could unlock this processor was by building a computer around it, a desktop computer. And with that, we can actually crank it all the way up to 120 watts sustained power 140 watts boost, and do it in a way that it's actually really quiet. So with that processor in a desktop form factor, we're able to build something really unique. Let's talk about these use cases one at a time, and we'll start with making gaming more accessible, PC gaming more accessible to more people. I love PC gaming. I love building gaming PCs. I've been doing it for 20 years, all the way back from my first Athlon XP computer, and actually I'm not gonna say how long ago that was because I'll tell you how old I am. It's not the most accessible place to enter, though. It's not the easiest thing to jump into. It takes up a lot of mental space. It takes up a lot of physical space, especially. And so when we were thinking about what is a computer that we could build to make PC gaming more accessible, we really wanted to solve for making it require less mental load to get into gaming and also less physical load. And so we came up with this tiny little box built around the Ryzen AI Max processors. And so this thing is actually just four and a half liters, so pretty tiny, pretty small. And what's super cool is that we've actually designed an optional handle so that it's not just that it's small, it's also that it's very portable too. So that's been a lot of fun. Going deeper into some of those PC standards, we also have a standard Flex ATX power supply. We worked with FSP, which is one of the biggest power supply makers out there. They actually are the manufacturer for a number of popular power supply brands. And we designed or semi-customized a power supply that actually has a new fan and new fan curves so that under normal load, the power supply is actually totally silent and only under pretty high ambient temperatures and very high sustained load will the little fan in there start to spin up. But overall, between that single giant 120 millimeter fan for the APU and that little fan in the power supply, this thing ends up being silent while it's sitting on your desktop under normal loads. And even under gaming, it's actually really impressively quiet. On to the second core use case, which is the workstation and machine learning use case. So we actually did a video a few months ago showing running local AI workloads on a framework laptop 16 we kind of walk through some of the basics of machine learning locally in your own home, on your own computer. And one of the core things to remember was that for AI models, the bigger the model is, in general, the smarter and more knowledgeable it's going to be. And so for that Framework Laptop 16 video, we were running these 8 billion parameter models using up about 8 gigabytes of memory. So of course, with 128 gigs of graphics addressable memory, we can run much, much larger models. And actually the constraint then becomes more memory bandwidth than the memory itself, especially when we wanna have real-time conversations. But what we found is that one of the more popular classes of AI models is about 70 billion parameters. We can get some actually really impressive results out of 70 billion parameter models. And so if you take that 70 billion parameter model and quantize it down to five bit, that takes up just over 50 gigabytes of memory and you can run it in a way that a single framework desktop, either the 64 gig config or the 128 gig config, can run that model at actually real-time conversation speed. 
So this thing that used to be this incredibly inaccessible sized model, 70 billion parameters, that would normally require multiple graphics cards in a massive workstation that may or may not even fit on a single power outlet, that's now something that we can do in this tiny little four and a half liter box and be able to have much, much smarter AI running locally, totally in your control without your data leaving your hands. What if you wanna run even larger models than that? You can actually network together multiple framework desktop mainboards into a multi-framework desktop cluster to be able to run models that are basically infinitely large, although obviously there are practical limitations to speed in that configuration. And so you might be familiar with DeepSeek. Everybody's talking about DeepSeek. So there are, of course, smaller distillations of DeepSeek, but the giant full-size DeepSeek models are 671 billion parameters and 683 billion parameters, these massive, insanely large models that normally would need to run either very, very slowly on a disk, basically, or need to run in an insanely inaccessible, expensive server off in the cloud somewhere. And so we actually built this as a proof of concept that you can connect together four 128 gig framework desktop mainboards with those Ryzen AIMX processors using USB 4 in a ring network. We also have five gigabit ethernet network together here in this tiny little half rack, it's half width rack. And it can actually run models of that size. And obviously this has 500, uh, 512 gigs of memory here, not 670 gigs, but you can quantize down those giant models to be able to run them on a setup like this. We're actually gonna do a deep dive and a step-by-step -step build guide on this setup, so we're not gonna go super deep on it right now, but this, this is something that we're actively working on with the team at AMD, along with a number of open source AI software developers. But it ends up being just a super cool solution to be able to, to run some crazy models locally. Another big part of enabling that entire PC ethos was the idea of customization. Really this idea that when you're building a PC, you can truly make it yours in a way that you can't most other types of electronics products. And we wanted to own that deeply. And so our industrial designer, Nick, came up with an awesome solution to enable some pretty cool customization. So the entire front panel of the framework desktop is made up of 21 of these little plastic tiles. And so when you're configuring a framework desktop, you can actually choose a bunch of these different colors of straight and diagonal lines to customize the front of your computer. But we also have a bunch of cool custom tiles as well, like a framework logo, we've got an AMD logo, there's a bunch of other cool things. So you can do stuff like show off your favorite Linux distro or show off your game library. And of course, because this is a framework product, we've also open sourced this module system. So in addition to being able to pick up modules from us, you can actually 3D print your own tile designs and just slot them right in as well. And we expect to see some crazy stuff come out of this eventually. Um, imagine a bunch of you are gonna come up with stuff like headphone hooks or mouse holders or whatever else. Um, and so really enabling as much personalization and customization as we can with this product. And if you wanna see just a really basic, simple version of it, of course you can just get all black and keep it really minimal too. And then in addition to this translucent side panel that you saw before, we've also got a super minimal, opaque black side panel. And so it really goes back to this idea that when you're entering the PC world, the desktop PC world, you can go all the way from super minimal, unassuming, quiet machine to as visually loud and interesting as you want. And it's all part of the whole philosophy. That was just a high level introduction to the framework desktop. We're definitely gonna be sharing much more over the next few months as we prepare to ship this out into the world. And just as a quick rundown, it is a four and a half liter, tiny little PC using AMD's latest Ryzen AI Max processors. We followed PC standards everywhere we could like mini ITX and flex ATX. And it comes in three different configurations. They're all actually DIY editions. So we're forcing you to jump into that PC world head first, but we are making it as easy as possible. 
And just like all of our computers, it supports both Windows and Linux. So you can use Windows 11. You can bring your own installation if you prefer. And we've been working with Linux distro partners to make sure that Linux support is smooth right out of the box. Of course, that includes Ubuntu and Fedora, but also a bunch of gaming-specific distros. We believe that this year is going to be the year of the Linux gaming desktop. So we've got Bazite. We've been working with the team at Playtron. And both of them are really great out-of-the-box solutions to get access to all of that Linux gaming content that's out there right now. So we can't wait to get this out into your hands and see what you think of it. Thank you.